the, the overall theme for today, uh, I think I would want to touch upon uh, digital transformation because that's been a word that's been abused pretty bad because everybody's talking about digital transformation in one way or the other. So in simple terms, what is digital transformation? It is nothing but finding out new ways of doing business or doing, uh, doing uh, things in a different way to ensure that the desired results are actually, uh, you know, you, you get the de desired results in a much easier way. So, so we'll just, we have the industry uh, uh, veterans on the stage here, we'll hear from them uh, one by one in terms of what they've been doing, what their visions are, uh, and then what their views are in terms of, uh, you know, what initiative that they've done. So let me start off, uh, Mr. Sundaresan, sir. Uh, I mean, could you kind of touch upon in terms of the top one or two initiative that you've done you from an university background. So what is it that you've done in the last few years, few decades maybe, to kind of uh, get into the digital mode or transformation mode? Uh, good evening, everybody. For any university, the vital part is the controller of examinations, that is examination section. So the first activity we took up that time was computerizing the entire examination activities, and I was part of it. I only did that. It was from 86 to 89. In three years, the entire system for uh, computerizing all the examination activities were done in COBOL, and it was handed over to the examination section. We did it from the Department of Computer Science, and we have handed over everything to the controller of examination section, and till now it is running on COBOL without any flaws. No problem at all. Only the hardware has been changing, and the platform has been changing, and it is running till today. The data capturing methods have changed. Of course, we heard earlier punched card machines, and we had punching machines like you know data capturing. We had floppy disk-based machines to capture data. All those things were there. But today, as of now, we have got OMR sheets to uh, take care of the data capturing aspects. And we have come through a long way. This is on the part of the examination activity. Then on the administration side, we have a lot of colleges, more than 100 and odd colleges affiliated to Bharatiya University, Arts and Science Colleges. Okay. And uh, all the colleges are sending us uh, reports to us, annual reports, all those things. We are computerizing everything, and we are sending it to the assembly, because as a state-owned uh, university, we are supposed to send all those things. Okay. All these things have been happening, and we have gone through a process of developing applications with respect to each and everything, and we have got, come up to this stage. Okay. Today, in this digital era, the most important thing is, you know, recruiters are there, okay. and the certificates of the students, mark sheets, and the degrees awarded to them are to be verified by the recruiters, and that is happening online. As an end user, all the people who, are, who want to verify the certificates are done online. And any application, if a student wants to access the information, it is also possible. That kind of development has come through, and we are not into really a virtual environment, but we are planning for it. Great, great. So what you're saying is you started off by mere computerization in the yes, 80s, yes. and now you're actually making use of a commerce a platform to ensure yes, that yes, you know yes. the certifications and uh, Our online verifications are actually being done online, which I think which is great. So uh, th thanks, thanks for the insight. I'll come back to you. So, yes. uh, Mr. Kubagran, sir, uh, what what are your thoughts and what what are the things that you've done in your respective institution to kind of you know get there? I was observing over the period of 38 years I stayed. Every almost every six years there was a change. First there was a mainframe computer ICL. Then when we went for super many Unix based systems came. All along we were having in COBOL, then we migrated to Oracle. Then we migrated to web based systems. Then we went to SAP. Then uh, hardware changes also. VMware, I could find a lot of improvements on that. A tangible improvements, we can say. Because earlier, whenever we want to change one operating system or anything, we have to touch the hardware also. <coughs> hardware, installation, testing, then it will become outdated in another four years. That was a big work. And now, that was very much simplified. Well, <clears throat> so one thing I find is, almost every six years there was a change. Change for what? We are able to get some tangible, uh, what they call some outcome in our productivity. We are able to save a lot. We are able to improve our speed. We are able to reduce our cycle time of operation, reduce the inventory, and all those things. 
We have done server virtualization and desktop virtualization that has yielded immense results. Every student has gotten access to two devices. One is laptop, another is mobile. That is 8,000 students have got access. 400 faculties, they got access. They can do their lab exercise. They can do all these things sitting in their rooms itself. Like ID is available, all the development environments, they can do sitting in their labs. Such facility I have not seen anywhere. Okay. So this sort of immense help has been done with virtualization. Not only this sort of help, plus power savings. I could see that at times we have not computed how much power has saved, but the, towards the green computing, it has really contributed. That okay. is one thing everybody okay. has to be concerned. Virtualization in Karunia, I could understand some two, three years Hmm. Earlier we started and it has really yielded very good results and we can see some tangible improvements. So, so, so yeah. in effect, what you, if I may uh, summarize what you've said, basically what you're saying is technology has actually helped you uh, yeah. or rather it's kind of more an enabler right now yes, exactly. than more of a support uh, yeah. that it used to be earlier is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And there is always scope for further. Absolutely. And this is definitely one of the best technologies which is the state of this thing today. Thanks for that. Sorry. So ma'am, uh, moving on to you. Uh, so what are your uh, one or two initiatives that you feel has been adopted in your uh, organization or institution? Well, as far as our uh, institution, PhD institution, I can say we have started decades ago in digital transformation. Of course, it is with uh, industry interaction. So we started uh, some uh, a decade ago with HP and uh, I IBM. Uh, so what is uh, the first uh, part of digital learning? So we started having some industry personnel not coming to our uh, institution and teaching us. It was like uh, uh, our remote uh, access. That is uh, through a video conferencing where students as well as faculty were trained from the industry people and uh, subjects like software, software testing and then uh, uh, even object oriented uh, concepts etc through industry link okay so they were uh, giving us online presentation from their place we were able to access here and through video conferencing it was done so that was the beginning of our uh, digital learning for our students because as far as now if you consider students they all wanted new kind variety of learning it's not just uh, chalk and talk learning alone. And uh, we have to update ourselves in providing such facilities and we started that uh, in our institution. So it was uh, first with the uh, digital learning and now still it is uh, enhanced uh, with MHRD and we are the remote uh, coordinator centers. So through MHRD they have provided us with an Akash tablets. So this tablet, though it has power is less, but it is sufficient for teaching inside a classroom. Even autonomous uh, administrative processes become our uh, system, right from our attendance entry. So it started with our attendance entry, then mark assessments. Everything is now automated as uh, uh, Sir was uh, telling controller of examination is a very big cell in an autonomous institution where we have to conduct our own examination and uh, result pass. So uh, we uh, conduct our examinations and the results are being published within five days. So that is uh, because of this automation process. Okay. What happens is in this automation, uh, even a parent, no earlier no parents does not know. People hide when we post, uh, people will take the uh, <laughs> post and students will uh, stop uh, uh, the postman by uh, delivering the post to their parents. So now it is not so. Even in their mobile, so because we have now empowered with mobile and you know about 3 millions of users will be uh, so if I may using it. If I may put it in a very light note, I don't think students are accepting it very really well, right? <laughs> parents, parents are, but students are not, right? So, <laughs> anyways, yeah. so, so parents very can easily uh, see their marks on absolutely, online absolutely. itself. So the so, results are uh, immediately, as soon as we publish, the uh, results can be viewed by the sure, sure. thing. So that is a digital transformation that sure. has done. So a couple and of interesting points that you touched upon. One is in terms of transformation, in terms of how the uh, uh, students access the uh, information. Yeah. Because given the current digital era, people are actually, students come in with mobile phones, tablets, laptops, desktops, 
So they need access to information from any devices. What you're saying, in in effect, right? Be yeah. be it whatever information they have. So so coming back, going to Mr. Hayat. Uh, so you being from VMware, uh, given the current couple of topics that the team touched upon, one is in terms of uh, the access of information, and second is in terms of technology adoption in the back end. What is it that VMware is actually doing to kind of uh, support the entire course? Okay. Uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, from an education perspective and what VMware basically sees, uh, you know, uh, what the education sort of vertical requires, uh, which I think one of the panelists very clearly mentioned, there are a lot of benefits they have, you know, uh, got out of, you know, the virtualization piece. So uh, from uh, our perspective, what we see is, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of advancement in technology, and I think all of us do agree to that, number one. Uh, number two, uh, there are a lot of colleges, uh, whether it's medical engineering or whatnot, uh, you know, the adoption of technology has been only in bits and pieces uh, in many colleges, right? A uh, lot of colleges are still on the physical infrastructure. And uh, when you do that, and when you move from a physical infrastructure to a virtual infrastructure, which is a part of your IT journey or digitalization journey, that is the first step which you're going to take. Uh, some of them here have done that, and I really appreciate that, because you mentioned that a lot of benefits which they have seen. So the first thing, you know, uh, you know, sort of applications which you run in your campus, or it could be on the cloud. The, the applications need not be only on the campus, right? It could be on the cloud nowadays. It could be anywhere. So anywhere, anytime access through any device becomes very, very important, which basically means two things. One is you need to have access, which is now available with 4G and, you know, as uh, Mr. Mohan mentioned, with 5G coming up and, you know, the internet links, MPL, all, all over the place, right? So you have that particular connectivity, last mile connectivity available with you, number one. Number two, everything, not, when I say everything, not 100%, lot of stuff is moving on to the cloud. And, uh, you know, you need to access applications which are on the campus, which are on the cloud, which are elsewhere, right? So you basically need to have that virtualization layer built which is a form of digital transformation which you're going to do as step one. And when you do that, you see a lot of benefits because people forget about, you know, a lot of cost savings which happen. And Mr. Mohan spoke about it, one of the panelists spoke about it, saying the lot of cost savings. And that is the first step which you need to do from a compute virtualization standpoint, number one. Number two is in today's world, if you look at some of the statistics, uh, you know, uh, each individual, right, an educated individual carries two and a half to three devices which he uses. It could be a laptop and a tab, it could be a laptop, tab, a smartphone, it could be a rugged device and so on and so forth. So with all this internet, you know, speeds available, every individual wants to access a particular application of whatever content for that matter uh, from anywhere. And that's what we have been doing, especially from a banking industry, right? So we, we never go to banks. And similar is the case with educational universities. While I heard some of them, you know, you know uh, currently it's restricted because you need to get into the campus to access a particular application. Now, in a few, I mean, if a lot of universities abroad and elsewhere, even in India, uh, they have removed that particular restriction. You can actually sit at home or sit in you know, the campus anywhere or sit wherever you are and access your particular application or the lab from wherever you are. So that becomes very important. So after you're doing, uh, having done the you know, uh, uh, compute virtualization, the next step is to have VDI, which is the desktop virtualization. Instead of tying yourself back uh, into a campus to do a particular project and access a few things, you can now access this anywhere. For example, just to give an example and not take too much time, uh, if you're sitting here, uh, right, you, ca you came in early and you wanted to read a particular white paper, which is available on the cloud, but is available only through the campus, because it's a restricted sort of white paper. You can't do it today uh, if you're not, you know, sort of virtualized. But if you have all the security mechanisms in that desktop virtualization software, sitting here, you connect to the internet, and you have a per, per you know, VPN, uh, per app VPN, and then you can actually connect and then, you know, spend your time. 
uh, more productively. So that is the trend which is going on in the industry from a higher education perspective, where we are bringing a lot of virtualization, not only to virtualize, but it also brings a lot of benefits in terms of cost, in terms of productivity, in terms of access anywhere, and so on. And VMware is completely aligned in terms of what it is bringing to the table by only giving these pieces from a software perspective. That's why whenever we define data centers and you know the other pieces, which I'm not going to touch upon, they're all software-based. The underlying hardware is irrespective. You can use the any underlying hardware, just run it as a software, and you have access anywhere. Okay. So these are some of the trends good, which are good, going good on. Good point. So I think so. What you're saying is you start off with the server virtualization, then move on to desktop, yeah, and then right. give the access out. So let me post the question yeah, back to one minute. Sorry. Yeah, we have an VM virtualization we are uh, set up in our uh, college, which we are utilizing to connect with all other labs. Oh, great. So uh, not only the lab connected with that server. So that server is connected with uh, labs located little bit far also. That's so by this uh, we are uh, utilizing and also we use OpenStack to set up our own cloud and uh, utilize the server utility because there are so many servers with uh, uh, things. So we are connecting everything to all other machines. Great. So, so basically what you're saying is you're, you're actually seeing the benefits of virtualizing and moving on. So coming back to Mr. Sundarajan sir, uh, he did touch upon the fact that accessing data from any device. So one thing that kind of stands out in the entire discussion is security. Yes. What are, what are your thoughts on that? What, what, what do you think could be a threat and so on? Yes, security is really a major concern. So uh, see, even if you take into consideration the online education or online portals wherein we are having proprietary uh, presentations, a teacher would like to uh, share everything to the students mm -hmm. and our certain teachers might like to have uh, proprietary information which might not be uh, allowed to be accessed by accessed others by else. Uh, just for the sake of understanding they can use it like that you know security issues are there okay and one more point which i like uh, i see is you know there are so many cloud providers uh, cloud service providers available as of now but everybody is uh, uh, limited to uh, the geographical locations okay they are going to buy the laws of the geographical location okay. suppose you know if we in india uh, are using cloud but we do not know where actually is the uh, machines, the servers okay. and other things. Okay. 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 But if there is a breach of security, okay. whom to be addressed? That's okay. the first point. Okay. Another point, if we go, if we want to touch upon the, uh, we want to go for a legal proceedings or anything like that, the SLA doesn't permit us to go to that level. Okay. These are some of the observations I feel when we just move on to the cloud in terms of uh, security as well. Okay. There, there, are, there are certain... Okay, so basically, from the student's point of view also, you know, hmm. they are really, as uh, Mr. Mohan Kumar said, you know, we, if we say don't do, they will do. <laughs> so students are likely to uh, breach the contracts. Okay, okay. So they would like to breach uh, into the hack and they would like to uh, take the data. Okay. And okay. these things ought to be uh, addressed in the security point. Okay. So basically what you're saying is, Security definitely is a point of a concern. Serious, serious, given concern, concern. serious concern. So, just uh, jumping back to Hayat. So, uh, given that we are actually talking about accessing data anywhere, what is technology? What is it that VMware is doing in terms of technology to ensure that it is secure? Okay. So, so we actually, you know, bring a couple of solutions to the table, and uh, you know, once you have virtualization in place, uh, I'd like to touch upon. He said cloud, and I'll just touch upon that. Uh, for example, for university, you know, and the, you said, you know, controller of examination is the most critical piece. So you're running a particular application on a particular server or two servers. Now, how do you basically, you know, uh, safeguard that particular <coughs> data, right? So you need to have a DR somewhere else, right? Probably in the campus somewhere in a different building or probably you have it in a different campus. And in today's world, it is you know, sort of people are looking at cloud as a DR as a service, right? I'm running my hosted content here, which is all the uh, net information of my particular organization, but I'm creating a DR because if something happens here, I actually have the, you know, all my content and data which is available, which can just be spawned out, right? You, you can spin it out. So for that, you need technologies which can span across your on-campus or as we say, on-prem, 
and across to the off-prem, which is your cloud. And the cloud can be anything. The cloud can be your you know, local cloud providers, or it can be the Amazons and the Microsoft Azure's of the world, and so on and so forth. So for that, you need certain set of technologies. And what VMware brings to the table is something called NSX, which is the network virtualization piece. Because in physical networking, and, and I'm sure most of you would know about switching, routing, and all the stuff, in you know, physical networking, it has its own limitations and complexities. You just can't move stuff you know, back and forth so easily. It takes really hours and days and weeks, in fact. So with NSX, we bring that particular flexibility of giving you a DR sort of solution, so that you have a single network between your on-prem here for example, in Coimbatore, and off-prem anywhere in the world, keeping latency in mind. That is number one. Uh, number two, from a purely from a security standpoint, once you create these, you know, virtual machines. Say initially, you had physical servers. You would, you know, install a couple of security agents like McAfee's and Semantics and so on and so forth. But that is for the physical infrastructure. But for the virtual infrastructure, though you have agents. The NSX, what it does is it can do segmentation of that particular virtual machine, which basically means to say, though it's not a physical virtual, you know, physical machine, it is a virtual machine. At a virtual machine level as well, we can actually do micro segmentation, number one. And, uh, you know, feel free to ask, you know, what micro segmentation is. I can, you know, explain it later. And on top of micro segmentation, we can apply firewalls, IDS, IPS, whatever is there. Uh, which is equivalent to in the physical world on a virtual world itself. And all these features, functionality, are available through a product called NSX, which VMware you know, uh, takes it to the market, uh, and very much applicable to you know, the education industry as well, thereby taking care of the security portfolio uh, which, which they are concerned about. And the second thing is there's also a uh, you know, product called App Defense, uh, though I'm not going to speak about it uh, you know, in detail. But just to give you a flavor, what that particular product does is for every application running, there are a set of processes which run when you kick in an application. When you boot an operating system and then you install an application, there are some, say, 10 processes running. And that is the state, intended state, which the application is supposed to run for whatever period of time. If there is somebody who's trying to hack that particular system, there is an additional process or something else you know, comes into that particular system, what the uh, software does is it looks at the intended state and it looks at the current state and says that there is a difference between what I'm supposed to do and what it is actually doing, right? And then it says, because of these reasons, I'm going to actually quarantine this particular VM away and then take remedial actions, right? So there are products around that portfolio uh, which can you know, take care of security at a very, very granular level, including at a VM level and a VDI level. And it can also be applicable. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you, you know, uh, certainly you would have heard of containers, but a lot of you know, people in the industry are developing programs for the cloud on containers only because it is so flexible, right, uh, and so agile. Uh, so even for containers, we can bring in security to that granular level for containers, VDI, and for the you know, compute virtualization. Okay, so, so what, basically uh, what we understand is the kind of concern that Sir posted in terms of where the data is going to be residing. No matter where the data is residing, Absolutely. we can ensure that the data securities or other security parameters are done both at the network, le network level Correct. and the app level, which makes it kind of secure is what you're saying. I would like to have yeah, sure. one more. Please, please. Regarding SLAs, you know, how SLAs takes, take care of these kind of, if there is any security breach, you know. So if what, you look, what you talked about is uh, technological uh, correct. Uh, exactly, exactly. point, and uh, what is that SLA talks about? So, so generally, uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm not from uh, Amazon or Azure, uh, but they don't commit on those SLAs. It is up to you to actually get the right security pieces inside your virtual infrastructure ah, if you're running it on cloud. And hence, you have all these vendors saying, you know, do this, do this, do this. Uh, but since we span between on-prem and the cloud along with the security components, it becomes a lot more easier for you to have, uh, you know, sort of security spanning across so, so wherever what, the data is. If I understand is. you correct, uh, I mean, what I could understand is that assuming you have an application the way the application is supposed to respond, we are, it's practically not possible for us to list down what are going to be the, what would be the possible threats. because. 
you list down 10 today, tomorrow the 11th one comes in, and day after tomorrow the 12th one comes in. So that is why I think we're talking about having an, uh, uh, a right state or, the, or, a, or a correct state for the application, which is whichever is not the right state is, is actually seen as a threat, which kind of quarantines it. So thanks everybody. So let me just uh, open the floor for questions. If you, if somebody has any questions, we are running out of time, so we, we quickly one or two questions we can take if at all we have somebody.